All right, let me grab Ann real quick. Wait, Ann's here? Yeah, I invited her. You, you said you wanted to spend some time with her. You said I was being an Ann hog. Ann hog's coming? I mean, I thought it was just, just gonna Anne. be like the two of us. All right, well, just load her up in the car. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 funniest arrested development moments. Oh, really? What did he say? What was the last thing he said? I just blew myself. He said some wonderful things. For this list, we're looking at all the best and most memorable times this legendary show made us burst into laughter. Which of these do you think is the most iconic? Sound off in the comments down below. Number 20, Chicken Dance. If there's one thing that can bring together this family, it's their love of mocking each other. And this just so happens to be one of their favorite ways to do it. Go, go, go! My life you've called me a chicken. That's over now. I have nothing to prove. Go, 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 that is not how chicken sounds. Chickens don't clap! Their poultry-inspired moves are definitely not an accurate representation of a chicken, but they are certainly funny. Everyone looks absolutely ridiculous when they start clucking away. What is that? Is that a chicken? What's this? Oh, Michael's scared to ask out Sally. No, I'm not. Oh, this is priceless. Go, 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 It's also just tons of fun to see the way each of them has their own interpretation of it. It's that classic Bluth craziness that we've all come to love so much. Has anyone in this family ever even seen a chicken? Number 19, Carl Weathers coaches Tobias. Everyone knows this man will do just about anything to get his career off the ground. That includes spending a whole lot of money on acting lessons from a movie star. Well, I could train you. Oh, well, I'm afraid all I have is $1,100, and, and that's for this plane ticket, so... Uh, check this out. $1,100 is exactly what I charge for acting classes. No, it isn't. Yeah. However, the teachings Tobias received were not exactly what he expected. Carl Weathers has a lot of wisdom to share, but it doesn't have much to do with acting. There's still plenty of meat on that bone. Now you take this home, throw it in a pot, add some broth, a potato, baby, you got a stew going. The dynamic this duo shares is totally hilarious. It's not very often that Tobias seems like the sane one in any situation. How can you not laugh at these two together? You know that you can get a refill on any drink you want here, and it's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful restaurant. Number 18, Michael's Banner. The Bluths may be dysfunctional, but they still occasionally have some nice family moments. This was such a sweet gesture. He is my favorite son. This Everybody's favorite son. Everybody had a great time. I wish I could have stayed longer. Well, except for the part where they were doing this out of guilt after leaving Rita passed out on a random bench. The party that was originally intended for Buster was turned into a celebration for Michael, and they are all just so proud of the sign they made for him. No, Michael, it's for you! Me. Take a look at Banner, Michael! You guys did all of this for me. Yeah. Family, love. Michael? The way Job delivers his line with so much enthusiasm is just perfect. Who needs good grammar anyway? Number 17, The Mole versus George Michael. This entire scene is just plain ridiculous. The family had somehow managed to trick the Japanese investors into thinking that the tiny model homes were a real housing development. Their success, however, was short-lived. A clueless Tobias had gotten involved with a member of the CIA who asked him to be a mole. We need you to be a mole. Oh, kind of a backer's audition. Okay, I get it. All right, well then, Frank, I shall be a bigger hairier mole than the one on your inner left thigh. He takes it a little too literally and stomps all over the miniature village while dressed up in his costume. Then things get even more insane when George Michael swoops in on the jetpack. It's just so beautifully chaotic. Okay, that's no surprise. George Michael. Dad, I'm sorry, I can't fly it very well, all right? Number 16, Anne Hogg. This poor girl can never catch a break. Michael is pretty bad at hiding the fact that he doesn't like his son's girlfriend. Are you okay? I don't feel so good. You know, I kind of want to buy her a diamond. Her? Anne. Basically, every time she gets brought up, he just has to say something insulting about her. He also simply cannot get her name right. When George, Michael, and Anne accompany his family on the ride to Mexico, she naturally becomes the butt of the joke. Hey, check out who's on that hog in the rearview mirror. George Michael! What? 20 miles to Legoland! Her quiet demeanor makes her stick out like a sore thumb among the Bluths. You can't help but feel a little bad for her, but it's still downright hilarious. Michael left with his niece, followed by his sister and his son, followed by the bounty hunter. 
Unfortunately, this left the girl Michael was determined to get to know alone in Mexico. Number 15, the cornballer. So we know it's super dangerous, but what Arrested Development fan hasn't always wanted to try this thing out? The contraption was deemed illegal because of the severe burns it causes. Be careful, don't touch that. Never touch that. But that certainly doesn't stop the family from keeping one around. And it definitely doesn't stop George Sr. from selling them anyway. We're also treated to an awesome flashback of an infomercial from the 70s where we see firsthand just how hazardous the machine is. And this great scene is made even better with a cameo from none other than Richard Simmons. Time to pull out the basket and we dig into some hot son of a bitch! Number 14, Man Egg. Hey, can I bring Ann? Who? Ann. Young love. It's a wonderful thing. But it can also make you see your partner through rose-colored glasses. Though Michael might have been a little quick to judge his son's girlfriend, and hilariously incapable of remembering that she exists, we can't fault him for the revulsion he felt in this moment. Oh, it's so cute. She sometimes takes a little pack of mayonnaise and she'll squirt in her mouth all over, and then she'll take an egg and kind of... Mm -hmm. <laughs> she calls it a mayonnaise egg. George Michael, you should follow your heart. But your description of the process behind a mayonnaise egg is indeed stomach-turning. And no, it's not so cute. Um, I'm sure that Egg is a very nice person. I just don't want you spending all Damn. your money getting her all right. glittered up for Easter. Also, when trying to make a good impression with your significant other's parents, maybe don't whip out a hard-boiled egg. Are you okay? I don't feel so good. Number 13, Kitty Gets Fired. This girl may be one of the only people on this show who is more unhinged than the Bluth family. These are not the files I asked for. And I don't know what I shredded. Have you had a chance to type up that report yet? No, I have been Googling your father. So I've heard. She also happens to have a love of flashing people. Of the many occasions she does this, our favorite has to be when Michael attempts to fire her. Kitty returns from sick leave with some new enhancements paid for by George Sr., and she is eager to show them off. Oh, hey, Kitty, there will be no margarita in your mouth. Oh, yes, there absolutely will be a margarita in my mouth. Spring break! Woo! Up here, Michael. Up here. She knows she can basically do whatever she wants and get away with it because she has dirt on the company. And we absolutely love watching her take full advantage of that. Number 12, Young George Sr. and Lucille. What an amazing way to kick off the start of the fourth season. Seth Rogen and Kristen Wiig are totally funny and accurate in their portrayal of the couple. She said it's um, Cinco de Mayo. She's taken uh, the day off. She said that? Yeah. She yeah. called it Cinco de Mayo? She did, yeah. Oh, why can't they just call it May 5th? They do a fantastic job of capturing the big personalities of these two. It's hilarious to see that young Lucille is just as bitter and scheming as her older counterpart. And the bit where she becomes the Grinch who stole Cinco de Mayo is just perfect. And then Lucille had a horrible thought. A thought that was thoughtless and better to not. What if, she thought, with a sneering grin. Next year, what if the party didn't even begin? The only thing that could make this better is if we got more screen time with this incredible pair. Number 11, Fire Sale. Am I panicked about the fire or am I being brave for everyone else? The fire. It, it's, it's a fire sale. For a man who was once a licensed mental health practitioner, Tobias sure seems to struggle with coming to grips with reality, seeing things objectively and reading the room. Or script for that matter. Oh my god! We're having a fire! Sale! Oh, the burning! It burns me! Tobias's big audition is for a simple and straightforward role, but fixating on the word fire, he completely misses the point and launches into one absolutely ridiculous performance. Again, this is an ad for a fire sale. Tobias did not get the part, but it certainly was a pleasure for us as viewers to watch him work. Would you like to try that a little simpler, maybe? No. Number 10, the speech chant. This goofy and nonsensical moment perfectly sums up the chaos of the Bluth family. They've all gathered for a Valentine's Day party that is also doubling as Lindsay and Tobias's anniversary celebration. Is this for an anniversary cake? Anniversary? You asked me to throw a Valentine's Day party. Did I? You tricked me. I deceived you, Mom. Trick makes it sound like we have a playful relationship. Out of nowhere, Job starts to call for a speech. Then everybody else enthusiastically joins in too. When no one else goes for it, Michael naturally is the one who steps up and takes responsibility. And of course, Job scoffs at this. 
Which is especially ironic, considering he's the one who started it. Yeah, after all that, I was kind of hoping somebody would make a speech. Speech! <laughs> speech! Right, speech! Right, right. Speech! I'll say something. Typical. This family sure can be bizarre sometimes. Number 9. Hard-boiled eggs. Why, Michael? So you can fly away from your feelings. One of the best subtle running gags in this reference-heavy series is the Charlie Brown walk, in which a character lowers their head and slowly walks to the melancholic music of Charlie Brown from the famed animated TV specials. In this Season 2 episode, which actually takes its title from Charlie Brown, Tobias takes home the award for Best Setup to a Charlie Brown Walk. Hey, where the f*** are my hard-boiled eggs? Mid-lecture, while psychoanalyzing Michael, Tobias suddenly cuts himself off upon discovering that his hard-boiled eggs are missing. It's totally random. His sudden angry outburst and subsequent depression have made it one of the most quotable lines from the series. Number 8. The Winky Face Medicine Is your mother drunk? I'd have to get up pretty early to get drunk by 1 o'clock. <laughs> Day drinking, familial manipulation, and a refusal to answer questions she doesn't understand. Lucille Bluth has got a lot of, let's call them, odd quirks and endearing eccentricities. But her winks? Those are legendary. Her whole family abuses the knowing wink, but it's everyone's favorite problematic matriarch who has the single greatest winking moment in the history of the series. As we said, Lucille likes to drink, and she's used to getting her way. So, when her medication featured an image of an eye and a drink crossed out, she interpreted this rather straightforward drowsy eye warning as a winking suggestion to have a drink. That's not how prescription bottles work. A call for a car. Unfortunately, this was after a failed attempt to do so. Who the hell put th Number 7. Maybe Becomes a Christian Who doesn't love watching this girl get up to one of her schemes? When George Michael is preparing for a Christian camping trip with his girlfriend Anne, his father tries to convince him otherwise. George Michael, I don't think you should be going on this promised land thing. What? Why, is this because I missed school? After she hears that the trip means she'd have to miss school, Maybe is eager to join in. She is very obviously not religious at all, and her attempts to seem devoted to her new faith are totally hilarious. Then you should go to him. For as it is written, you shall be with whom you have formed a more perfect union with under God. She's right. This isn't working. This moment also has one of our favorite examples of the awesome way Arrested Development uses wordplay. Do you guys know where I could get one of those gold necklaces with a T on it? That's a cross. A cross from where? Number six. Buster tells us how he really feels. I'm mom and I want to shoot down everything you say so I feel good about myself. <laughs> The youngest of the Bluth siblings takes the concept of the baby in the family to absurd extremes. And with his charming man-childishness, he's been at the center of many of the show's funniest and most quotable moments. Like when he mistook boxed wine for a big juice box. In this other particularly memorable episode, Buster and Lucille's love-hate relationship sees Michael forced to temporarily take over the parenting duties of his younger adult brother. I'm an uptight Buster! Everything about their dynamic in this episode is hilarious, but it's the moment when all the siblings get together to rag on their mom that Buster really comes out of his shell. Well, no one's gonna top that. We couldn't have said it better ourselves, Michael. Number 5. Tobias Blues himself The king of unintentional double entendres never fails to make us laugh. Despite others being aware that he sounds downright filthy, Tobias is completely oblivious. And he realizes there is something distinct about the way he speaks. Tobias, you blow hard. And this is one of his best innuendos by far. In an attempt to join the Blue Man group, he covers himself and pretty much the entire house in paint. Do you have an audition yet? Oh, no, no, I'm not in the group yet. No, <laughs> I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> Gotta be a better way to say that. He looks totally absurd, and Michael is so over it. Poor Tobias doesn't even get to make it to his audition after being struck by a car. But it just makes the whole situation even funnier because he gets treated by the very literal doctor. Uh, just to be clear, it, it looks like he's dead or he is dead? It just looks like he's dead. He's got, like, blue paint on him or something. But he's going to be fine. Number 4. Job's Bees We can always count on Job to do something over the top and bizarre. Inspiration strikes when he mishears Lindsay talking about her newly found interest in beads. Because for your information, I got a job. 
Really? What kind of job? Beads. Bees? Beads. Beads? He's practically buzzing with excitement over his brilliant idea. Sadly, this endeavor is not a successful one. His family is not particularly supportive of his plans. And it turns out that the prison guards are very strict about enforcing their no bees policy. I kind of got my hands full with these babies. He's got bees! No bees! Oh, oh, get it. They don't allow you to have bees in here. These fuzzy little insects may not have been the best business venture, but they certainly gave us plenty of laughs. Bzzz. We'll see who brings in more honey. Number three. The dead dove. We just say, uh, I know, but you just doesn't matter who. As anyone who's lived in a house with a big family or shared an apartment with roommates will tell you, it's important to label the stuff in the fridge and freezer or risk having it eaten. This is clearly the logic that Job was operating under when he left this clearly labeled brown paper bag in the fridge. But you can't really blame Michael for doing a double take and, in disbelief, feeling the need to investigate the note's outlandish claims. He's understandably horrified and disgusted when he looks inside and finds a dead dove. But it's his one-line response that really sells the moment. Thankfully, as instructed, he does not eat it. I don't know what I expected. Number two, Mrs. Featherbottom. My name is Felidia Featherbottom, and I can cook, and I can clean, and I can take care of the little ones. Ah, Tobias, you poor, deluded man. As an attempt to get closer with his wife and daughter, but also, you know, showcase his acting chops, the disgraced uh, analyst therapist decides to pull a Mrs. Doubtfire with just a little dash of Mary Poppins. He fools literally nobody, but the family is happy to see him actually being useful for once, so they just go along with it. The love of the family is more than enough. This prompts an exasperated Tobias as Mrs. Featherbottom to try to out himself, attempts which the family collectively ignores in the name of a clean home. Tobias's performance as Mrs. Featherbottom is downright ridiculous, painfully funny, and has near infinite replay value. I need to move. Oh, we shan't be telling your mother this, shan't we? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the banana stand. When you think of unforgettable arrested development jokes, it's no doubt that this little establishment comes to mind. The stand had been part of the family business for decades, and George Sr. always reassured his son that they could rely on it. I need the flight records. Dad, I'm trying to find some money for the family. There's always money in a banana stand. Things go south when newly promoted manager George Michael decides to burn it down. Surprisingly, Michael doesn't try to stop him and joins in instead. Burn it down. What? Let's burn this son of a bitch. The two watch it go up in flames and share an unconventional bonding moment. The bad news is that Michael doesn't realize his father was being literal until it was too late. Cash, Michael. Why didn't you tell me that? How much clearer can I say there's always money in the banana stand? No touching! No touching! No touching! No touching. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.